the guard. Advance. We've been doing this Memorial Day ceremony for probably about four years now. Um, every year we come um, on the Sunday before and we make the laurel sprays to go on the veterans' graves and then we come and take the younger Girl Scouts around and help them lay the laurel sprays on the graves. This holiday, what it really means to me is a day of honoring all the veterans and it's a day of like peace and honoring those, so that's what I think. My name is Kayvon. Yes. Um, and so for me, this holiday is really about, you know, like uh, my friend Alex said, honoring the veterans who have given up their lives for this country um, and really celebrating what we mean as a country um, and, you know, celebrating that these people were willing to fight for something that's worth fighting for. Um. This holiday means a lot to me, uh, like honoring the veterans, but just yesterday, like, it got a whole new meaning for me because at the cemetery as we were putting flags out, there was an old man there who was in the Korean War, and he was there for his grandson's grave to commemorate his grave, and that gave me a whole new meaning and a whole new perspective of this day. Mother's brother, um, Jerry Gerard, was a World War II veteran, and he was only deployed one month before he was killed in action in Belgium, and just before the Battle of the Bulge. And that is so nice that you honor his memory and come to an event here in Saratoga. Absolutely. Well, I'm a lifetime Saratoga resident myself, so I don't want to forget. Don't want to forget him. This captain and I have been standing here for many years. You on this. You, yeah. We hope that we're standing here next year to be able to say hi another year. Well, this might be my last year because... Uh, this June I'll be 92. 92. Oh, that is super, super he wonderful. Was in the war before the Korean War. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Who was General Washington? He was my general. <laughs> general Washington. <laughs>
As is our custom, on this day, we recall the words of our 16th president as he voiced the nation's sorrow that cold November day, just four short months after the Battle of Gettysburg. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. This nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom and that government of the people by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. <coughs> the poppies that bind the laurel sprays are inspired by the poem written by Lieutenant Colonel John McCrae, MD, a Canadian doctor who served in the World War I. In Flanders fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place. And in the sky, the larks, still bravely singing, fly, scarce heard amid the guns blow. Today, I feel so honored, honored to be with the community of people that want to acknowledge the ultimate sacrifices that have been made on our behalf by our military brothers and sisters. This history is not only the sacrifices that have been made by those in previous wars in distant lands, this is happening now. I am a Saratoga High School graduate, and I just served a year in Afghanistan. One of my classmates is a Navy SEAL, and another one of my classmates is training to become one. The fact is, this is not ancient history. People I knew six months ago are no longer with us. I am not a veteran. I was not active duty military personnel. I volunteered from my normal duties at the U.S. Department of State in Washington to work in Helmand Province, Afghanistan, as a diplomat and as a civilian. As a diplomat, my job was really to teach the Afghans how to strengthen their civil society so that their society could function without us, without U.S. forces and without NATO forces. But I worked, lived, and breathed side by side with the Marines. As I mentioned, six months ago, I was back on Leatherneck. I got the notific notification email of a hero transfer ceremony which is called a ramp ceremony. The bodies of our Marine heroes who have perished in the field would be sent via C-17 jet aircraft to Dover Air Force Base and then on home to the United States. During my deployment, there was a ramp ceremony approximately every three days. Every able-bodied man and woman on the base Marine and civilian alike, who was not forced to work, to work, would line up side by side to pay tribute to our heroes as they made their final journey. We are hundreds, evenly spaced with military precision, shoulder to shoulder. No one moves until commanded. Fists are clenched at our sides. Our shoulders are arched back. Our heads and our eyes look forward and never stray. We are as still, as rigid and solemn as one will ever be. It is hard to hear these big men cry, knowing that they will not move to wipe away their tears out of respect for their brother. A prayer is said by the chaplain, and as the hero makes his way to the belly of the beast, the Marines salute and civilians place our hands on our hearts. And we each turn row by row to silently say our final goodbyes, thinking of the family that is at the other end of this journey. 